There were three in the meadow by the brook, gathering up windrows, piling hocks of hay, with an eye always lifted toward the west, where an irregular sun-bordered cloud darkly advanced with a perpetual dagger flickering across its bosom. Suddenly, one helper, thrusting pitchfork in the ground, marched himself off the field and home. One stayed. The town-bred farmer failed to understand. What is that wrong? Something you just now said. What did I say? About our taking pains. To cock the hay? Because it's going to shower? I said that more than half an hour ago. I said it to myself as much as you. You didn't know, but James is one big fool. He thought you meant to find fault with his work. That's what the average farmer would have meant. James would take time, of course, to chew it over before he acted. He's just got round to act. He's a fool if that's the way he takes me. Oh, don't let it bother you. You found out something. The hand that knows his business won't be told to do work better or faster. Those two things. I'm as particular as anyone. Most likely I'd have served you just the same, but I know you don't understand our ways. You were just talking what was in your mind, what was in all our minds, and you weren't hinting. I'll tell you a story of what happened once. I was up here in Salem at a man's name Sanders with a gang of four or five doing the haying. No one liked the boss. He was one of the kind sports call a spider. All wiry arms and legs that spread out wavy from a hump body and as big as a biscuit. But work? That man could work. Especially if by so doing he could get more work out of his hired help. I'm not denying he was hard on himself. I couldn't find that he kept any hours not for himself. Daylight, lantern light were one to him. I've heard him pounding in the barn all night. But what he liked was someone to encourage. Them that he couldn't lead, he'd get behind and drive the way you can, you know, in mowing, keep at their heels, and threaten to mow their legs off. I'd seen about enough of his bullying tricks. We call it bullying. I've been watching him, so when he paired off with me in the hayfield to load the load, thinks I, look out for trouble. I built the load and topped it off. Old Sanders combed it down with a rake and says, Okay. Everything went well till we reached the barn with a big catch to empty in a bay. You understand, that meant the easy job for the man up on top of throwing down the hay and rolling it off wholesale, where on a mow it would have been slow lifting. You wouldn't think a fella need much urging under these circumstances, would you now? But the old fool seizes his fork in both hands and looking up bewhiskered out of the pit, shouts like an army captain, Let her come, thinks I. Do you mean it? Oh, what was that you said? I ask out loud so there'd be no mistake. Did you say, let her come? Yeah, let her come. He said it over, but he said it softer. Never you say a thing like that to a man. Not if he values what he is. God, I'd have soon murdered him as left out his middle name. I built the load and knew right where to find it. Two or three forkfuls I picked lightly round for, like meditating. And then I just dug in and dumped the rackful on him in ten lots. I looked over the side once in the dust and caught sight of him treading water, like keeping his head above Damn ye, I says, that get ye. He squeaked like a squeezed rat. That was the last I saw or heard of him. I cleaned the rack and drove out to cool off. As I sat mopping hayseed from my neck and sort of waiting to be asked about it, one of the boys sings out, oh, where's the old man? I left him in the barn under the hay. If you want him, you can go dig him out. I realized from the way I swabbed my neck more than was needed, something must be up. They headed for the barn. I stayed where I was. They told me afterward. First, they forked hay, a lot of it, out onto the barn floor. Nothing. They listened for it. Not a rustle. I guess they thought I had spiked him in the temple before I buried him or I couldn't have managed. They excavated more. Go keep his wife out of the barn. 
Someone looked in a window and cursed me if he wasn't in the kitchen, slumped way down in a chair with both his feet stuck in the oven. The hottest day that summer. He looked so clean, disgusted from behind, there was no one that dared to stir him up or let him know that he was being looked at. Apparently, I hadn't buried him. I may have knocked him down, but my just trying to bury him had hurt his dignity. He had gone to the house so as not to meet me. He kept away from us all afternoon. We tended to his hay. We saw him out after a while picking peas in his garden. He couldn't keep away from doing something. Weren't you relieved to find he wasn't dead? No! Yet, I don't know. It's hard to say. I went about to kill him, fair enough. He took an awkward way. Did he discharge you? Discharge me? No. He knew I did just right. 